Uh, I am honored. We have four very great speakers tonight. Our first is Mary Dixon. Mary is a thyroid cancer survivor. Uh, she's also in the gallery for 2018. So Mary, uh, pleasure to introduce you. Come on up. Okay, you were very good and so articulate, and I want a copy of what you said. Thank you. Um, I am really happy to be here. It's kind of sad. It's, I look at all these gorgeous photos. Where's the photographer? They're beautiful. Thank you. Um, and you see hope in those pictures. Um, thank you for doing them. I, I kind of feel, um, I don't, survivor seems so strange because I was very young, mercifully young when I was diagnosed. And the doctor called me to say, you have thyroid cancer, it's malignant, and that's not a good call to receive. But he said to me, but it's the best one to get if you have to get cancer, which isn't really comforting because I was not shopping for cancer. Um, my youngest sister cried and cried and gave me her favorite Madame Alexander doll. My mother would just look at me and burst into tears. And I, all I could think is I thought I was going to be okay. They must know something I don't know. I should be worried. I, I think the best reaction I had, I know all of you who've had cancer, you get the strangest reactions from people. I had a friend who physically stood away from me like I was contagious. Um, the best reaction I had was a very good musician friend of mine who came to pick me up for a concert the day I was diagnosed. And he just looked at me and goes, something is going on with you. I said, I, I just found out I have cancer. And he goes, interesting. That's interesting. And you know what? That was the best thing he could have said to me because I thought, this isn't tragic. I'm interesting. I'm, I'm just someone, I'll watch myself like I'm just some curiosity. I'll just see what happens. And I, I really think that helped. Other people would bring soups and flowers and pajamas and robes and all I knew was that I was going to have to have surgery and then radiation, but then I'd get six weeks off. And I thought, I'm just going to watch old movies, comedies. I'm going to go on long walks. I'm going to just take photographs. And you know what? They were some of my favorite six weeks because I had a pass. I could just check out. I, um, and a friend of mine said, oh, you can use the cancer card. Just use it for a while. And, but what one thing, and this has probably happened to all of you, I mean, one thing I did, and I just kept feeling for more lumps, I couldn't stop. I probably will always feel for lumps because you're always worried it will come back, but I've decided to embrace fear as my friend because fear is what tells me that I can cut through the clutter and just focus on what's really important. And that's, as we all know, it's our families, it's friends, it's nature, it's beauty, it's those small everyday miracles and the ordinary things in life where I find the most beauty, those moments that just make you sing. And I started noticing more of those. I walked more slowly. I looked at things. I really saw them. Um, I know most of us, I, I always like to tell people with like cancer, there's not six degrees of separation, there's two. Either you have it or someone you know and love has it. And I was just last week at a play that a friend of mine did, his one-man show about his prostate cancer. And um, I watched that knowing the truth, that it had come back. It was in his liver, aggressive, and the outcome was not going to be good. And I got home. I looked to the house next door to me that's now empty and dark because my neighbor of many years died of lung cancer about a month ago, and his daughters aren't sure what to do with his house. Um, I think about my niece, she's 35, she was just diagnosed two weeks ago with aggressive, aggressive stage three breast cancer. Um, I, my sister who found out this summer that she has stage three cancer, um, a friend of mine who survived falling off the Grand Teton, he survived that, came to my house because he had an appointment at Huntsman because they were gonna remove half of his ear because he has melanoma and it's gone to his limbs. And I just think that my own journey has been fairly easy. I, I got better. Um, I think it's harder the older I get, and I see all the people I love so much. I've seen their cancers come back. I've, I've seen them die. It's a lot harder for me to see other people battling it. Uh, the thing I've learned, though, is you just have to hold out hope. What you said about hope is so important. You have to hold out hope for a cure for the time that cancer is just another chronic condition that we manage. Um, 
And I do think of how many times since I've had cancer, I've, and it really changes your perspective, any of you who have had it know this, people will come up with these like pit, piddly little problems and tell me. And I'll just look at them and go, and smile and go, you know what? It doesn't really matter. And so much of what we worry about doesn't really matter. Um, cancer just helps you very, get very clear about what really matters. And it helped, for me, it's just helped me seek out moments of joy. It helps me grab life and live it fully. I say yes to every opportunity because there are always adventures waiting for you. And my only regrets are the times I have said no. So you just have to live, you have to love, you have to sing, you have to dance, and you have to say yes, yes, and again, yes. <laughs>